Okay, great, I'm just going to check out. I really, really need that new Mac. So I'm just gonna go and check out and... Perfect, my payment's gone through, excellent. Wait, what's that? It's gone through again? That's kind of strange. Again? What? What is happening? What is happening? Why will they keep taking my payment? Hi, I'm James Easton. Hopefully the companies that you buy your things from online don't put you in that same situation, processing your payment over and over and over and over again. Although event driven architectures can feel easy at the outset, there's actually so many things you all need to think about as you build an event driven system. Not least, how do you manage potentially receiving the same event multiple times? And in this video, you're going to learn all about item potency. Many messaging technologies guarantee at least once delivery. At least once being the important bit, because what that means is that you might end up receiving the same message multiple times. And even if you're using a messaging te technology that guarantees one-time delivery, that doesn't account for the fact that the system upstream of you that's publishing the event might publish the same event twice. So how do you actually handle this? And this is where item potency becomes really, really important. What do I mean by item potency though? So imagine a situation where you're receiving events from a message bus. This is your system here and events are getting published onto this message bus. You're receiving them in your system. And it might be that some of these events are duplicates. Maybe this is event one, this is event two, this is event three, event one comes up again, and then event four comes up again. In this situation, maybe the upstream service published event one multiple times. If you were handling these events without any kind of item potency, you'd handle event one, do your downstream processing, handle event two, handle event three, handle event one again, you would have no way to know that you've already processed event one, so you would handle that again, handle event four again, everyone's happy, maybe, maybe this is a massive problem. If this is processing payments, this is going to be a massive problem. So what does it actually look like to implement item potency? Let's imagine this exact same scenario now. You come in and you process event one. At the point you successfully process event one, you're gonna write the fact that you've processed event one into some kind of data store. You're gonna say, hey, we've processed event one. This might be a cache, this might be an actual physical database. You're just gonna store the fact that you've processed event one. Event two comes in, you process event two. You say, hey, we've processed two. Three comes in, we've processed three. Now, when event one comes in again, you're first going to check this database and say, hey, have we already seen event one? In this situation, yes, you have already seen event one, which means this event just gets dropped, doesn't get processed, and you say, hey, yeah, that's been processed successfully because you know it has already been processed previously. Event four comes in, you go off and you process event four. So this is what item potency is aiming to do. It's aiming to store the fact that you've successfully processed the message in some kind of separate location so that when you are processing messages, you can check to see if you've already processed them. Now, there's two different ways to think about implementing item potency. The first is using some kind of unique identifier on your events. If you're using the cloud events specification, which honestly, people, you probably should be using the cloud event specification. And if you wanna learn more about that, I've got another video which will be appearing somewhere around me now talking all about the cloud event specification and what that is. But if you're not familiar, the cloud event specification is simply a defined spec for how you should structure your events. One of the properties inside a cloud event is an ID property. That ID will typically set to some kind of random GUID, random unique identifier. This is what you would use as the one, the two, the three, the one, the four. You would, at the point, at the point of publish, your publishing system is generating this unique ID. You can use that as a downstream system to say, hey, have I received this event before? This isn't completely foolproof though, because imagine this situation where your downstream system publishes the same event multiple times and maybe it publishes the same event, but with a different ID. There's some kind of problem inside this service that maybe it's order one, two, three, and for some reason it processes that twice and it publishes two events with different IDs. In this scenario, you're going to want to use business context to also implement item potency. So instead of relying on just the cloud event ID, you can also rely on something inside your actual event payload. Imagine this is a order 
confirmed event. And it's your payment service that's handling that order confirmed event. As the payment service handles the order confirmed event, it's first gonna check the ID. Yep, I've not seen this ID before. Let's go on and process this. The next thing it's gonna do is it's gonna check the order number that's in the payload of the event. So it's also gonna say, have I seen an order confirmed event for order ORD123? No, fantastic. Let's go on and process the order. That second event then comes in that has a different event ID, but the order number is the same for the same type of message. So there's two different ways that you have to think about item potency. Using a unique identifier is great and you should absolutely do that. But remember that still doesn't absolutely guarantee that there might be a problem in an upstream system that means you receive the same event multiple times. How would you actually go about implementing that in .NET? Let's go and have a look. So item potency in .NET. To have a look at that, let's have a look at the payment service inside plant-based pizza. A payment service, obviously something that's really, really important that you don't take people's payments multiple times. So how exactly can you implement the two different ways of doing item potency that I talked about in the introduction? Well, if you have a look at the payment project and have a look at the event handlers class. So this example uses Dapper as its messaging middleware. So you won't see an awful lot of code in here actually reading from SQS or SNS or Azure Service Bus queues. This is using Dapper to manage that middleware. So all you need to really understand here is that this method gets called whenever the take payment command is received onto the payments.takepayment.v1 topic. All you need to know, the messaging middleware is largely irrelevant for what we're doing here. And the first thing we're gonna do inside this method, once we kick off some observability stuff, which you don't really need to worry about, is we're gonna make a call to our cache and we're gonna try and get a string from the cache. That string is going to be events underscore and then the actual event ID. Dapper uses cloud events as a built-in transmission format. So we get that event ID property as standard. The cache here is simply using an I distributed cache implementation. Under the hood, this is actually using Memento. If you're not familiar with Memento, they are a fully serverless caching solution. Yep, fully serverless cache. No more needing to run Redis inside a network somewhere. So this I distributed cache interface is implemented under the hood by Memento. Of course, if you were running this locally, you could also sub that out for Redis if you so wish. So you're making a call to a cache and we're gonna see if there's anything in the cache that has that event ID. And if it does, if there is a cached event, I'm gonna add this item potent tag to the telemetry to tell me to allow me to actually run some analysis inside my observability backend to say actually how many of these events are being processed multiple times. And then I'm gonna return okay. This is important. If the item is in the cache, that means that this event has been processed successfully and you only write to the cache when it has been processed successfully. So if the event is in the cache already, if this is an item, if we need to ignore this request because it's already been processed, we want to return okay. Because we're saying this duplicate event that you've just sent to me, I've already processed it. I don't need to process it again. Then you go off and actually call into your business logic. Again, the business logic is largely irrelevant here. Just going off and running some custom business logic. And finally, once everything is processed successfully, I'm gonna set an item in the cache using that same structure, events underscore the actual event ID. And then I'm gonna set the timeout to be five minutes. This, this means that if this same event was received in six, seven, eight minutes time, it would be processed again. Now, the reason for doing that is that maybe there is a scenario where something goes wrong. Maybe you think the payment has been processed, but it hasn't actually been processed successfully. You might want to re-trigger the payment service using that same event. So actually, if you receive a, if you, so actually, if you receive that same event more than five, 10, 15 minutes, an hour in the future, maybe you do want to process it again. And that number you use there for the timeout will depend completely on your specific business situation. So don't just use five minutes just because I have. Use something that is relevant to you. So at a high level, that is item potency. Now, of course, this is using the event ID. As I said in the introduction, you might have an event for the same entity, but using a different event ID. And the payment service is a really good example of this. If you actually go and have a look at the business logic now, actually have a look at the handler for for the take payment command. Here again, you'll see that you're using the I distributed cache. 
And again, you're making a call to the cache to see if there's anything in the cache. But this time, you're using the order number from the actual event that you've received. You're using some actual business logic. Because here you're saying, well, although I've checked the event ID, I also want to make absolutely damn sure that I've not already processed a payment for this order number. So you're also going to check if there's anything in the cache for this order number. If there is, again, we're going to return success. If the app if that order number is in the cache, that means that the payment has been processed successfully, which means we can return, okay, the payment has been processed. Otherwise, we're gonna actually go off, we're gonna actually take the payment. Of course, this application doesn't actually take any money off people, so it just kind of simulates that with some random delay. Then it's gonna actually publish an event back onto the event bus, and finally set the string in the cache. So although here I'm using a cache as my item potency layer, that could equally be a database, it could be a DynamoDB table, it could be a Cosmos DB table, it doesn't really matter. You're just storing, you're just persisting the data somewhere so that you can check back at a later date to see if that has been processed. And in almost all cases, you're gonna want some kind of expiry on the items you store to check. That just allows you to process events multiple times. It stops that table or cache from growing completely unconstrained. So make sure you set some kind of timeout. What that timeout will be will, com will depend completely on your actual application. Fantastic. Item potency in .NET. Okay, come on people, it's 2025. Let's not be processing messages multiple times. There are patterns in place that can help you. Please don't do this. Always consider the fact that you might receive the same message twice. And whether you're handling that with a unique identifier with something like cloud events, or you're using custom business logic to make sure you don't handle the same thing twice, it doesn't matter. Just make sure you're always handling the fact you might see the same event multiple times. And if you do that, well, you're setting yourself up for success. Believe me. See you in the next one.